Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation. We have f of x plus f of x minus 1 equals x squared and f of 11 equals 50. And we're going to evaluate f of 41. Now, let's go ahead and start by replacing x with 12. Since we already know f of 11, we can go ahead and use x equals 12 on both sides of this equation. And now that's going to give us f of 12 plus f of 11 equals 12 squared. Notice that the larger number is squared on the right hand side. And we, we can basically keep doing this until we get a pattern. Our goal is to reach f of 41. So we're going to have to take some steps. But let's uh, see, take a look at a couple values. If I replace x with 13, I get f of 13 plus f of 12 equals 13 squared. At this point, you don't really have to evaluate them because we're looking for a pattern, so it's better if you leave them without simplifying. And then I'm going to do the 14, and that's going to give me f of 14 plus f of 13 equals 14 squared. I mean, you can keep doing this, but you don't need to. Let's see if we can get a pattern from here. Since I do need f of 41, it makes sense if I replace x with 41 for the last time. And of course, all the values in between. Because if you use 42, then you're going to have to uh, evaluate 42, but that's not the goal. So f of 41 plus f of 40, and this should equal 41 squared. Great. Now, our goal is to find f of 41. And we do know f of 11, which uh, both of them are part of uh, these equations. But there's a lot of extra terms, such as this one. For example, I have f of 12 here and here. And I need to get rid of them. So if I just add up these equations, it's not going to help me because they're not going to cancel out. So I have to work in such a way that I can cancel out, you know, all the terms except for f of 11 and f of 41. So how can I do that? We're going to be using and alternating sum here. So here's how we can do it. We're going to take f of 12 plus f of 11. And then to it, or from it, we're going to subtract, we're going to subtract f of 13 plus f of 12. So we're going to subtract the second equation from the first one. And then we're going to add the third one, which is f of 14 plus f of 13. And then we're going to subtract the next one, which is f of 15 plus f of 14. And we're just going to proceed in this manner until we get to f of 40 plus f of 39. And then finally, we're going to be subtracting from this f of 41 plus f of 40. Now notice what happens when I find this alternating sum. This is going to give me something that I'm looking for. f of 12 is going to cancel out f of 13 is going to cancel out, f of 14 is going to cancel out, f of 40 is going to cancel out, and of course f of 39 comes before that, so that's also going to cancel out. The only two terms that are left are going to be f of 11 and f of 41. So this alternating sum is going to equal f of 11 minus f of 41. But I do know what f of 11 is, remember, f of 11 was given as 50, so if we replace f of 11 with 50, the answer is going to be 50 minus f of 41. But think about it for a minute. Where, the, where, does, uh, where do we get this um, alternating sum from, right? We get it from here. Look at that. So each term is taken with a plus sign and a minus sign and a plus sign and a minus sign. And final one, the last one, since it kind of starts off with an odd uh, input, uh, that is going to be a minus sign. Make sense? Okay, so here's how it goes then. The right-hand side of this equation is going to contain 12 squared minus 13 squared plus 14 squared minus 15 squared dot 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 plus 40 squared minus 41 squared. So notice that the even number squares will come with a positive sign and the odds are going to come with a negative sign. But how to evaluate this? this is kind of complicated. So there's a couple of ways to go about it. Let me show you a couple alternatives here or maybe at least talk about it, not necessarily go over it. But you can go ahead and kind of group the evens together, right? There's going to be a bunch of evens and a bunch of odds. So you can subtract the sum of the odd squares from the sum of the even squares. 
But in that case, you're going to have to deal with even numbers squared. You know, you don't have all the squares, so that's going to be a little, not tricky, I would say, but it's just going to be a little time consuming. So there's a better way to do it. Another approach would be, you can think about all the squares and then subtract the odds doubled, because if you, if you subtract them twice, uh, that's going to give you uh, all of them in minus sign. Or there's actually an even better way, which uses something that I really love, uh, and I think that's probably one of the most important formulas, uh, and that is the difference of two squares. So a squared minus b squared can be written as a plus b times a minus b. I think you should know this. If you did a little bit of algebra, you should definitely know this. Very important. So let's go ahead and apply it to our first two terms. 12 squared minus 13 squared. My goal is not to find a numerical answer, but to get a pattern. So this is 12 plus 13 times 12 minus 13. Since these terms are always consecutive squares, their difference is going to be negative 1 because the second number is always larger. So what happens is we get a negative 1 from here and we get their sum from here. So it's kind of like the opposite of their sum. Makes sense? Uh, and this is going to be negative 25. So if you did, for example, um, 14 squared minus 15 squared, that will be negative 29 because the sum of 14 and 15 is 29. So you're going to get the opposite. Make sense? So in other words, this sum, this sum right here, turns into negative 25 plus negative 29 plus negative 33, dot, 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 all the way up to negative 81. And the last one is negative 81 because look at, take a look at that. 40 plus 41 is 81, and we have to negate that. Make sense? So these are odd numbers, but they skip. So they're basically odd numbers that leave a remainder of 1 when divided by 4, but they're negatives. Don't worry about it. We're going to do the following. First of all, notice that we have the 50 minus f of 41 on the left-hand side of the equation. So let's rewrite it. And then set it equal to this sum. But how do you evaluate the sum? I want to take out a negative sign. So that makes everything positive. Now we're going to worry about what's inside the parentheses. That's kind of like a, a, sort of like what is called a Gauss sum. And to evaluate that, this is what we're going to do. To find this sum, let me go. And actually, uh, we can make it positive too. So if you go ahead and isolate f of 41, put it on the right-hand side, and put everything else on the left-hand side, you're going to get the following. 50 plus, now you're going to get a positive sum, which is nice. And I'm still going to write that in parentheses so you don't get confused. So I have to evaluate what's inside the parentheses, right? But that's easy. How do you evaluate it? Let me go ahead and tell you a really cool method for Gauss sums. 50 is going to stay the same, of course. So you basically, this is an arithmetic series, right? So you take the first term and then add the last term and divide by 2. You have to multiply this by the number of terms. But do you know how many terms there are from 25 through 81? You can count, but you don't need to. Here's a shortcut for this. You subtract the last term minus the first term and divide it by what's called the common ratio. And that is going to be actually, I'm sorry, correction, common difference. It is positive 4. So we're going to divide it by 4 and then add 1. This always gives you the number of terms in an arithmetic sequence or series. Great. So let's go ahead and evaluate this. And F441 from here is going to be 845. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.